the beautiful island of Tobago comes the radical voice of power, Bishop Roe Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Sunday morning worship service at Mount Grace is at 8 a.m. Patience Hill Open Bible Sundays at 8 a.m. Roxboro Open Bible Sundays at 9 a.m. Castaro Open Bible Sundays at 10 a.m. Junior Church at 8 a.m. Sunday Youth Service at 6 p.m. Tuesdays Healing and Deliverance Service. Wednesdays Prayer Meeting and Bible Study. Fridays Hour of Power. We also provide a daycare and kindergarten school service for from Monday to Friday. Office hours Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. For counseling and prayer, call 639-6403 or email us at mountgraceopenbible at gmail.com. God bless you and our doors are open wide to welcome one and all. The terrifying, the terrifying days of the Lord or the jetful day of the Lord. Turn with me to Amos chapter 5. And I want to read from verse 16 to 19. And this is from the God Words translation. Amos chapter 5, verse 16 to 19. And it reads, This is what the Lord, the Almighty God of armies, says. This is what the Lord, the Almighty God of armies, says. There will be loud crying in every city square. And the people will say in every street, Oh! No. Oh, no. They're saying this right now in Trinidad. They will call on farmers to mourn. On professional mourners to cry aloud. There will be loud crying in every vineyard. Because I will pass through your land with debt. There will be loud crying in every vineyard, says Jehovah, because I am going to pass through your land with debt. Somebody saw him last year walking, going through the Bahamas. And God is going to go through the nation. Remember when he just passed in the wilderness, the great cedars of Lebanon shook and shake. You see, when God wants our attention, he gets dread. My God, help us. Help me to preach as I used to from here on until I depart. There will be loud crying in every vineyard because I will pass through your land with debt. The Lord has said this. Not a prophet. Not a head of state. But the Lord. I remember when the President Bush said to Saddam Hussein, in so-and-so days, I'm coming to your land. And he did that. Now this is the great Jehovah. This is the great I am that says, I am going to walk through your land with debt. Else, when God walking through your land, he has debt behind them. So some people are going to die. Some things are going to die. How horrible it is 
how horrible it will be for those who long for the day of the Lord. I think the King James said, oh, jetful. This translation said, how horrible it will be for those who long for the day of the Lord. Why do you long for that day? That's the question. The day of the Lord is one of darkness and not light. It is like a person who flees from a lion only to be attacked by a bear. My God, you talk about jetfulness. You're running from a lion. And as you're running from the lion, a bear. So what that tells you, no way of escape. No way of escape. Oh my God, help me to preach this year and beyond this year. Let the preacher in me rise again. The day of the Lord brings darkness and not light. It is pitch black with no light and this is a sign oh this is a sign that is follow the great jehovah when he comes and he descend upon mount sinai smoke what smoke does dark in the place Oh my God, help us. Oh, this message is so jetful. When you read the book of Amos, his word to Israel and the surrounding nations, his message rather was very jetful. Sometimes you hardly see any little hope in it. But that was because of the condition of his days. And let me just give you a little about his time. The prophet Amos lived in a day when both society and the people of God were spiritually bankrupt. We're spiritually bankrupt and we've seen this right now in many nations. Many nations are spiritually bankrupt. No sense of spirituality at all. No sense of morality at all. The religious leaders were professional preachers. Their concern was to be politically correct. And that seems to be the order of our preaching today. We want to be careful of what we say and how we say and to whom. We say to, oh my God, help us. Immorality was rampant. Gross immorality was openly tolerated and practiced by some of the religious leaders. It was a norm. For some of the religious leaders to have their wife and four outside women. Or to be in some kind of unquestionable or questionable action. In other words, they were doing all kind of things. Some of them were even lying to the people. 
the spiritual condition, the moral condition of Amos' time was very, very bad. Materialism, luxury, ease, bribery, extortion, shallow thinking among religious and political leaders was the order of the day it was the religious leaders were very shallow in their thinking they were not deep thinkers like moses like ezekiel and like the prophets they were shallow so they were not concerned about the spiritual and the moral welfare or well-being of the people the government of the days they were not concerned about the poor the poor was getting poorer and the rich was getting richer because of their shallow thinking they were not concerned about the real need of the people. And most of the people were poor people. It was very hard for a poor person to buy a pair of shoes. It right there in the book of Amos. They were not concerned about social justice. You know what even happened in Trinidad and Tobago? We are not concerned about the effect of ganja. I used to smoke it. The put you in another world. When ganja take over your head, you'll walk just with a man with a gun and if he fails to pull that trigger, you'll take the trigger and blow his brain out of his head. They're not concerned because they are shallow thinkers. And if we cry against it, they want to ostracize us. They are shallow thinkers, just like in America. They were not concerned about the effect of homosexuality, what it will have on the society. So they go ahead. With the strike of a pen, you are free to have same-sex marriage. Notice right here in Trinidad and Tobago. Front page. We are not concerned about the children. I sometimes, I want to get radical like long time. Why are you so damn stupid? Yeah. Let some people be removed. You're not concerned. You're not looking far ahead. Because you are a shallow thinker. And you know, sometimes that good for all you know. All you like to let damn stupid people rule all you. Who have no sense. Look for sensible people to lead you. One time Jesus said that man was stupid in him. I want to come back to that place that I, I was. I didn't fear nobody. I don't care who the hell you are. You can come from hell itself. Jehovah is my God. He fears no one. When he speaks, the very element is trembling. Amos was no professional preacher. He was a simple cattleman. And maybe he was a street preacher, I don't know. Seems like some of these guys were country preachers. And God picked up the simple country preacher 
and sent him from Judah to Bethel. Bethel was the place of power, the place of wealth. The place where the ladies in Bethel, all they were concerned is about luxury. They were like the queens of the land. Maybe they used to call them first ladies. Like some of these first ladies today, Sister Alicia, they are the queen of the church. So if they wear tights, all the ladies can wear tights. Because first lady is wearing it and you dare not go in that church and preach against first lady. She is a woman of power. So God sent this man. He walked those days. You had to walk. It seemed like he must walk about 22 miles to go to Bethel. And he dealt with everything. He shook up everything. He shook up the religious leaders, the political leaders. He shook up the women because it seemed like in that time, women had lost it. They lose it. In their Jesson. How they comport themselves, what they were doing. So Amos attack from Kappen to what you call it? He attacked everybody. If you notice us today, we are afraid to attack some people. We are afraid to attack Mr. Big Stuff or Madame Big Stuff. There's a guy I like when he really attack any everybody in the United States, the president and all. I don't believe in everything he says, but I love the guy for that. His name is Genos Jenny. Attack anybody. And the guy is right because if God send you, God is bigger than the country. And no denomination send you. It's God. So who you are? Who are you afraid of? The day of the Lord, or as I said, the terrifying, the dreadful day of the Lord. The day of the Lord is the day when Christ literally comes to reign on the earth with his raptured saints. He's going to come literally on the earth with his raptured saints. Hear what? Enoch, way before the time of Moses, it seemed like it was way before the time of Job. There was a guy by the name of Enoch. If you Google the book of Enoch, you'll see a lot of the whole thing will come up and then you can have some reading there. This guy was a guy that walked with God. It seems like as a humankind, it seems like he had the closest relationship with God so much that God took him out of the world. He was the first man that escaped death. He was raptured. And you know the question should be asked. If this man was so close to God and this man pleases God why is his writing missing from the Bible? I'm trying to get that book, the, 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 that Bible. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam. Which means the seventh generation from Adam. Prophesy of these saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon the earth and to convince all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they 
have ungodly committed and of all the hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So Amos told us that the Lord is coming with his saints to the earth. Jesus will literally come. So it means therefore that the rapture will take place before this great day of the Lord. The rapture will take place. There are many preachers now over the social media that are saying that there is no rapture. There is no second coming of Jesus Christ. May God help us. And you can take this. Don't, I'm not going to read it. Zacharias. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 1 to 9. And you could read the whole chapter. But this day of the Lord is a jetful day. If you notice how the world, the global tiny village that is getting smaller and smaller, but more and more wicked and indifferent to Jehovah God. Can you imagine when he comes? The day of the Lord will be the rule of Christ. The rule of man will be over. It will be a day where the Lord Jesus Christ rule and reign with his saints or his church. He will rule all nations with a rod of iron. All nations will have to comply with the agenda and it is an eternal agenda of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, it is the original agenda that God had given to Adam. So the world will be as how God wants it to be. His will will be on earth as it is designed in the heavens. No nation will be able to resist the agenda of Jesus Christ. All nations before him will be like there's nothing. That's why it is called the day of the Lord. The day when Christ shall come and literally reign and rule upon the earth. There will be something greater than a paradigm shift. I call it a divine shift. Sometimes man can be involved in a paradigm shift, but this will be a divine shift. And you know, as well as I, that no one can even stop the finger of God from moving. One time, in a mighty country by the name of Babylon, everybody fear Babylon. Babylon, the greater. Lord Jehovah God did just with his finger. He wrote something on the wall. When it was interpreted, the king got a diary one time and his knees went out of joint. You think this great Jehovah is somebody to be played with? Peter spoke about the day of the Lord in the book of Acts and I want to read it. And he got this from the book of Joel in Acts chapter 2 verse 17 to 21. And it shall come to pass in the last days, 
says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon some flesh. Upon some flesh. And if God says he will pour out the spirit upon all flesh, we will get a global revival. A global spiritual awaken if it is just two days before the rapture is going to happen. God says this here. No. Upon all flesh. So me, I think it could be a year before I was reading this one night. God woke me up. And the Lord just kept me right there. Upon all flesh. As we haven't seen anything as yet. And preachers don't let no religion, no denomination put any limitation upon you as it relates to the end time. Because the man said, upon all flesh. Some people are saying there will be no great revival again. But God says here through the prophet Jerel that he'll pour his spirit upon all flesh. They said in some of these great revival, God touched the donkeys. He touched the animals. Notice when Christ comes in the glory of his kingdom, the lions will be touched so that my little daughter could go on a lion back. It's in the Bible. So some of those criminals, or let me say these criminals, will put down their gun when the power of God start to move in the nations. They will bring their guns. Hey, look, the Holy Spirit just jumped in my mind here. Yeah. He said, son, this has happened under the preaching of Charles Finney. You see why you cannot allow anybody to limit you? With their shallow thinking. Tell me what to believe and what not to believe. If I could crack your head, I'd crack your damn head. You are not God. They used to bring their guns. Bring the stolen things. Because of the spirit of God. That was being poured out upon them. Husbands used to go back to their wives. Wives used to go back. To their husbands. Parents used to go back to their grandparents and ask for forgiveness because of the Spirit of God. It is the Spirit that does the work in us. It is not our preconceived ideas with our strategies that we come up with to reach the lost, to reach the Families, it is the Spirit of God. Nobody getting me to those things. I know when to pull the veil. I believe in the Spirit of God. I believe in the power of God. I believe in how Jesus did it. I believe in how the apostles did it. I believe in what the prophet says. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says Jehovah. What man cannot do, what man does not have the ability to do, the spirit of God will do it in a split second. Before your eyes wink, it is done. The man is changed. The community is changed. The order of the day is changed. Because of the Spirit of God. You know why the Spirit of God has the ability to do such a thing that in a second the man is changed. 
In a second, the home is changed. In a split second, the nation is changed. In the beginning, when there was nothing, and the Almighty God spoke, and He says, Let there be light. As the word went forth, the spirit went forth with the word, a light was created. In a second, we struggle to do things, but in a second, a move of God can bring revival that from next Sunday, you have to come here early to get seat. Just like that. In one moment of time, when the people are caught up in the spirit that ecstasy, the church can change. Oh God, help us! And I can take my time and read scripture. And your sons. And I have to take this out. <laughs> and your daughters shall prophesy. Daughters, don't let nobody tell you that you cannot preach the gospel. I don't care who that person is. It says here, let me read. Let me see if I could read that's how some people understand. And your sons, and your sons, shall prophesy. Let me see something. And your sons and your sons shall prophesy. What, what he says? So if God says that, who are we? If God says that, who are we? Leave the Daughters alone, leave the woman alone. Paul made a statement, don't widen it. Because there are many statements that were made in the Bible. And you just need to leave it as it is. So note it says here, Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And that would mean they shall proclaim. They shall preach. Just get down into that original word here. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants. And on my young men. Let me see properly now. Put my glasses. Let me read it with my glasses and see. I don't even want to read it up there, but I know you're seeing it up there. No? I put it up there, put it up there. And on my servants, and on my, what is it? So why do you let people tantalize your mind? That's why I go to compare scriptures with scriptures. Sometimes, a writer makes a statement because he was dealing with a problem. You know, take it and blow it out of proportion. There are two extremes. I don't believe in none of them. I believe in balance. And on my servants and on my handmaidens. Let's stop right there. It was two handmaidens that decide to pray and seek the face of God and God visit them and God told them who to go to God sent them to go to a man I forget the man name in the book that you read and that's how that revival starts it was a handmaiden by the name of Kachin Kuman that sort of ushered in the supernatural in a new dimension in her time And on my servants, 
and on my handmaidens. Arise, handmaidens. This is your time too. And shine. And I can share a verse of scripture in Isaiah that says, when we men not taking our responsibility, God says, I am going to take women and children. I'm going to use them. So God says, I want to get it down in your spirit because I want you who are called and all of us are called and all of God's children are called servants of God. So you are a candidate for this outpouring. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. Now when you're looking at scripture, look at the context in how the scripture was written to us and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out note in those days of what so these are days of what the Holy Ghost these are days of the Spirit of God from the day Jesus said behold I will send the promise of my father upon you tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are being clothed with power from on high. So these are days of the spirit. So all we have to do is to meet the conditions and then we are going to see revival. We are going to get revival. We are going to experience revival because these are days of the Spirit of God. We sing these are the days of Elijah, but I am telling you, these are the days of the Spirit of God. These are the days of Ezekiel. These are the days of the Spirit of God. Let him fall upon you. Let him flood you out. Be intoxicated by the Spirit of God. Do not be satisfied. You know, that's our problem today. We, we, we are satisfied with a little sprinkling. And we pride ourselves when we get a little sprinkling. But I want the flood tide. We ought to have the desire of Ezekiel. He saw the river flowing. It is the river of God. Going out from the Dead Sea. He saw it flow from the desert rather into the Dead Sea. And Ezekiel saw Everything in the Dead Sea came alive. I preached on that some years ago. And Ezekiel started to walk the water and reached to his ankle. And then he got up to his waist. And Ezekiel had the sense he's swimming the water. So wherever the river goes, he goes. That must be your aim when you're talking about the baptism. Don't just aim to get a sprinkle. We mustn't just aim to get a sprinkle here. We want to swim in the water. We want to go wherever the spirit goes. Like Ezekiel when he saw the vision, he saw a wheel in the midst of a wheel and the spirit following so wherever the spirit goes wherever the spirit leads we just follow that is what we want if one sunday morning we come here and we note that the prayer time cannot stop we just flow with that if we come 
and we note that the worship leaders right, they cannot stop because we want to change the order of things this year i want sometime sister lisha you get up here with the choir and just minister minister and wherever the spirit goes we flows on some of you you sing, you come up here and not just one song, and you sing a song and another, and we just flow. That's how it is, get revival. But you have some of us we bent on following the order. That's why I don't like to go to some churches and preach because they're bent. I'm waiting and somebody singing and oh my God, the place is charged. They will cut it just so. Because they have to follow the program. So this year, when you call me, I'm sending something to you. If you do follow that, can I get me? Because I like to go where the river flows. Christ said, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. I do not like dead water. The stench. Oh my God. Next verse. And it says, go down. And I will Show wonders in heaven above and sign in the earth beneath. Let's stop there for a while. Who is going to do this? The great Jehovah is going to do this. Who is going to do this? The great Yahweh is going to do it. Who is going to do it? The great I am. And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. And my God, look at this. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. God said, I'm going to do it. So God has the ability to order things as he desires. Whether this will be done by wars or nuclear bombs, God is the one that will order it. Because when I look into the Bible, I see God order the Medes and the Persians. I don't know how they did it, but they took Babylon by force. And the great Babylon was fallen. Some place in the Bible, God says, I will order my armies to come and eat dung all your crops. That's what he said. Next verse. Watch that blood and fire. Oh my God, can you imagine this? The sun shall be darkened. Because it says here, the sun shall turn into what? Are we talking about the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? Eh? All night I was reading this portion. And the Spirit of God kind of take me up into a dimension and God was showing me he said son there will be so much walls so much nuclear explosion um, explosion and God said son have you not noticed that all of them trying to get up there. Send up their satellite up there. Even the Chinese are up there now. God said, 
There are going to be wars, not just on the earth, but wars above us. You see how jetful this day of the Lord is? All these things will happen before the day of the Lord. And note what will happen. And the moon, let me read it over. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And the moon into what? A note before that great and notable day of the Lord comes. Things are not going to get better. They're going to continue to get worse. So they're going to be blood on earth. Somebody sent a clip for me and it indicates the com I think it's you and did you get the thing I sent back to you? All right. The chicken has begun. I am I would not be surprised if we this generation see World War Three. That it's gonna be a war that is fought with some sophisticated weapons. God is my witness. Because I allow the Spirit of God to take me deep into prayer. Deep, deep, deep into prayer. That's why a long time I used to go in the woods and I'll only go with certain people. When I get deep into prayer, the Lord will show me things. And one night, I got up and the Lord was showing me something because I was praying in a certain way. And one of the things we must learn, we must allow the Holy Spirit to intercede through us. And when he's interceding through us, he has a way of interpreting what he was saying to the Father, to you. And then I remember the Lord told me, said, son, America is like a little piece of paper to me. I could just crumble it just with my hands. He said, Russia is like a little piece of paper. And then he led me into the scripture and showed me how he crumbled great nation. No nation is too big for God to handle. The big bear is not too big for God to handle. It might be big for us to handle. The great America is not too big for God to handle. The great Venezuela is not too big for God to fix. The little Trinidad and Tobago is not too bad that God cannot fix. So note there what you ought to expect. The sun turn into darkness. And I believe this will be caused by wars. Nuclear, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if it's missile or whatever. And the moon into blood. And note it says, before that great and notable day of the Lord come. So a lot of things are going to take place. And right now, we are close to right there. You see this? We are close to right there. Blood flowing has never been before. And the kind of weapons that they are making, it can blow the sun out of habit. But God's hands is upon time. And I, don't, I do not care what kind of weapons they have. If God says, 
not now, it is now. And if you try to force God's hands, God will sink you down in the dust, disintegrate you. That's the kind of God we serve, you know. He's in control of everything. Sometimes he sits back and let you go along with the devil and make your plans and do this and do that. And God will just say, you ain't doing nothing. This is my world. Get the hell out of my world. With all your might and your power. That's the God we serve. Because he's God. Next verse. Verse 1. That is verse 1. And it shall come to pass. That. Whosoever shall call. On the name of the Lord. Shall be saved. And you can be saved now. This morning. If you will only call upon the name of Jesus. And say to him, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sin and cleanse me of all my iniquities. You shall be saved now. For it is written, believe on the Lord and thou shalt be saved, you and your what? Household. So you can be saved right now. This very moment, just say, Lord, have mercy upon me and cleanse me of all my sins and my iniquities. And he will save you right now. All you've got to do is repent. Because it says, and it shall come to pass. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you ought to be saved. This is the only way you can prepare for the day of the Lord is to get saved now. This very morning. This very moment that you are listening. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And he will save you now. Not tomorrow. Paul spoke about the day of the Lord in Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. 1 to 3. He says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering unto him that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by words nor by letters as from us that day of the Lord is at hand. And then he says, let no man deceive you by any means. You have to be careful that no one deceive you in this time. You can be deceived by men. But Paul says, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come unless there come a falling away first and that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And that is the Antichrist. So note here that the Apostle Paul made it clear that two things must precede the day of the Lord. And one is what? A great falling away. And this is taking place right now. A great falling away. And then he says, the man of what sin? Because right now, many pastors and many churches are departing from biblical truth. From the biblical order in which we should live. Many of us are following the world. Many Christians are following the world. There is a biblical order that we ought to follow. We were told to come out from among them and be separated. 
We cannot follow the world. We don't run church to follow the world or to appeal to the world. There is a biblical order. As a Christian, you must follow the biblical order. So this falling away within the church will have two dimensions. This falling away within the church will have two dimensions. One, the theological. There is a theological order in which the church ought to operate. We cannot follow the world just to become politically correct. There's a theological order. What we see now, a great apostasy. We departing from that order. We have to follow the instructions of the word of God. I was showing, you know, our pastors that as we shut away ourselves, I was reading from the Bible and I was showing them how Paul did it. I was telling them, do not be deceived by people who just coming up with a written thing, written strategies. We have been using that for years and still we're not getting the job done. Paul followed the order of praying and seeking the face of God just like Jesus. Jesus didn't come with no new strategies. He spent time with God. John the Baptist didn't follow nothing but God and the Spirit of God. And the people turned by the thousands. Some people have conference for hours days always with a piece of paper and when you go back nothing ain't working but I'm telling you when you are filled and you get a dose of the Holy Ghost and fire it is a thing for the hour that's how Paul did it he said I know that he which has begun a work in you will continue until the day of Christ. Because he prayed. That's how we perfected the saints. As we pray. And give ourselves to God. Marriages will be healed. People will be turned around. You've been viewing the ministry of the Radical Voice of Power, Bishop Raul Reed of the Mount Grace Open Bible Church. Join us again for another power-packed session. And remember, one touch from Jesus and your life will never be the same again. To obtain a copy of this message, call our office at 639-6403. God bless you.